A dead body has been recovered and 23 people have been rescued after the scaffolding of an under-construction building collapsed in India's southern city, Chennai. The incident took place in the city's Kandan Chavari area. Eight ambulances and several fire tenders have been rushed to the spot. Two units of National Disaster Response Force team are also present at the site. Yet another case of mob lynching has been reported from India. A group of villagers killed a man allegedly on the suspicion of cow smuggling in Rajasthan's Alwar district. The police has launched a probe into the 28-year-old Akbar Khan's death. Two people have been arrested so far. In 2017, a cattle farmer, Pehlu Khan, was lynched by a mob as he rode home from a market with two cows and two calves in the back of his truck in the same district. One terrorist has been killed in Kulgaon district in Jammu and Kashmir. Encounter is underway and 22, two to three terrorists are believed to be holed up. Sources are telling Beyond that the trapped terrorists are the killers of Salim Shah. Remember, Shah's body was found yesterday with multiple bullet injuries after being kidnapped by terrorists. The Indian government has decided to exempt sanitary napkins from the goods and services tax. The move comes after many hues and cries of several activists raising their voice after sanitary napkins were included under the GST bracket in the 12% slab. The plea to exempt sanitary napkins from GST has been going on for long. Sanitary napkins were taxed at 12% under the one-year-old GST regime. The Los Angeles Police Department has said it has taken into custody a suspected gunman who was holed up inside a grocery store. Earlier, the gunman was believed to have taken hostages in the Los Angeles store in California. The suspect had entered the store while he was being chased by the police. Protests led by leftist group broke out in Argentinian city of Buenos Aires. The protest erupted as International Monetary Fund in Argentina warns world economic leaders that a recent wave of trade tariffs would significantly harm global growth. A currency crisis this year prompted Argentina to seek IMF financing. Opposition politicians led a protest against IMF chief Lagarde's presence. The IMF has warned that trade war will harm global economic growth. It comes a day after U.S. President Donald Trump threatened a major escalation in a dispute with China. IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde has said she would present the G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meeting in Buenos Aires with a report detailing the impacts of the restrictions already announced on global trade. Cuba's new president, Miguel diaz Canel named his cabinet on Saturday. He has kept a majority of ministers from predecessor Raul Castro, including in the key post of defense, interior and foreign relations. diaz Canel, who replaced Castro in April, announced the new cabinet at the start of Cuba's National Assembly meet. The meet will also discuss a draft of the new constitution designed to replace the island's Soviet-era Magna Carta. Russia's foreign minister has told his U.S. counterpart that a woman arrested in the United States on accusations of being a Russian agent had been detained on fabricated charges and should be released. Sergey Lavrov made the comments about Maria Butina in a phone call to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The phone call was aimed at improving bilateral relations. The police cordoned off a popular park in the English cathedral city of Salisbury on Saturday as they continued with a Novichok poisoning probe. Two Britons were exposed to the nerve agent had visited before falling ill in the Elizabeth Gardens. Dawn Sturgis died earlier this month and her death is being treated as murder. And Charlie Rowley was released from hospital on Friday.
Donald Trump has uh, lashed out at his former lawyer Michael Cohen over taping his conversations. Uh, Trump said Cohen may have acted illegally after it emerged that he had secretly taped a discussion about payments to a former Playboy model who claims she had an affair with the US president. Reportedly, the FBI had ceased the recording during a raid on Cohen's office earlier this year. Chinese President Xi Jinping has published a sign article titled China and Rwanda Friendship Higher Than Mountains on mainstream Rwandan newspaper ahead of its state visit to the African country. Xi pointed out in his article that despite the vast geographic distance and differences in size, system and culture between China and Rwanda, the two peoples enjoy a deep traditional friendship. The independent Peruvian legislator Vincente Quesebolos has been sworn in as the country's new justice minister. Swearing in happens a week after his predecessor quit the job for his ties to a corruption scandal that has sparked wide debate. Thousands of Peruvians had come out to protest against corruption earlier this week. Two of the four Britons accused of gang raping a British woman in the Spanish city of Ibiza has been held on remand and the other two have been released on bail pending trial. The Spanish police has said a woman from the UK reported the four British men drugged and gang raped her after meeting them at a bar in the popular tourist spot of San Antonio. Spain's Conservative People Party has elected Pablo Casado as their new leader. It marked a swing to the right for the party that governed the country from 2011 until June. Casado defeated Soraya Senes by 1,701 votes to 1,250 votes in a ballot of lawmakers and other senior party members. Riddled by corruption scandal, the party is seeking to re-establish its identity. Zimbabwe's president Emerson Mengwagwa addressed a crowd of white voters on Saturday. It is in an attempt to improve relations ahead of a July 30th election. It has marked a shift from his predecessor Robert Mugabe, whose uh, policies became increasingly racially divisive. Uh, Mengwagwa came to power when uh, Mugabe was removed in a de facto coup in November. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched a countrywide emergency ambulance service for Sri Lanka. The Indian Prime Minister and his Sri Lankan counterpart Ranil Vikram Singhe flagged the first phase of the India assisted ambulance services across the island. Now, Vikram Singhe said the ambulance system expanded the reach of health services in his country. Pro and anti Ortega groups marched on the streets of Managua amidst months of unrest that has tested the rule of the leftist government led by President Daniel Ortega. Nicaragua has been racked by civil unrest since protests broke out in April against former Marxist guerrilla leader Ortega and his Sandista over plans to cut welfare benefits. <laughs> Pakistan's anti-narcotic court has sentenced close aide of Nawaz Sharif and PMLN leader Hanif Abbasi to life in prison in an ephedrine quota case. Hanif Abbasi has been convicted for misappropriation of 500 kgs of the controlled chemical ephedrine, obtaining it in 2010 and selling it to narcotic smugglers. The verdict in the scandal was announced last night in a six-year long case. Interpol has issued red notice for fugitive former finance minister of Pakistan Ishaq Dar upon request of Pakistan government. 
Nivesh Akhtar has been an absconder in at least three different cases in Pakistan. A Pakistan has requested the assistance of Interpol in Dar's arrest from London. France and Russia have dispatched a plane carrying humanitarian aid to the ravaged former Syrian rebel enclave of Eastern Ghouta. The enclave was retaken by government forces in April after a five-year siege. It is the first joint humanitarian aid operation between Russia and a Western country. The aid was distributed under the supervision of the UN's office for the coordination of humanitarian aid. The migrant woman from Cameroon, Josefa, has arrived in the Spanish safe port of Palma de Mallorca. Josefa was rescued by the humanitarian NGO Proactiva Open Arms in the Mediterranean Sea on July 17. The migrant has been taken to land on a stretcher where an ambulance and Red Cross workers awaited. Josefa was found in the debris of a dinghy near the Libyan coast along with dead bodies of a woman and a child. Palestinian mourners took to the streets of Gaza City on Saturday in a funeral procession for a man killed during protests along the Gaza border with Israel. Processions were carried out hours before Hamas said it had agreed to a truce with Israel in the Gaza Strip. On Friday, fire exchange between Hamas and Israel killed an Israeli soldier and four Palestinians along the border. Severe water logging triggered by heavy rains in India's eastern Odisha has thrown normal life out of gear and is causing inconvenience to the residents. People try to make their way through heavily submerged roads and vehicles remain stuck. People have blamed the poor drainage system and government inaction. China has taken a series of precaution measures as the National Observatory forecasted that the typhoon Ampil will make a landfall in the eastern coastal region. Inter-island transportation has been suspended along Zushan Islands. The strong winds began to lash the city, forcing local relevant departments to use bamboo sticks to support trees. More than 4,600 people are stranded on the island so far. Firefighters are continuously struggling to put out wildfires that have swept across Sweden after a protracted period of exceptional heat and drought. Authorities have said that there were 35 registered wildfires burning affecting more than 20,000 hectares across the heavily forested Nordic country. There have been no reports of deaths or injuries. A heat wave in several parts of Germany had temperatures soaring to as high as 34 degrees Celsius at the weekend. In southern Germany, which was feeling the heat, Munich residents cooled off in the shade and surfed the waves of a man-made river, Isbach, in the popular public park Inklichter Garten. Meanwhile, around Berlin, people could be seen slurping ice cream and hitting water fountains and lakes. It's been a busy summer in Germany for the Squirrel Rescue Organization Berlin Squirrel Help and early onset to summer and high temperatures this year have meant a high rate of squirrels getting sick or dying from lack of access to water and food. The organization helps feed squirrels year-round, particularly youngsters who have fallen out of their mother's tree nests or are injured. A tractor led multiple police cars on a chase through downtown Denver in Colorado. A video uploaded to social media showed the tractor driving through a busy intersection with police in pursuit. 
Police cars and officers could later be seen surrounding the tractor after it had come to a stop. The two police officers sustained non-life threatening injuries in the incident. Belgium celebrated their national day in Brussels on Saturday. King Philippe, Queen Mathilde and their four children led the festivities in front of the royal palace and watched the traditional military parade marching. Politicians and dignitaries were also in attendance with, while other Belgians took to nearby Ro Partial Royal for a day of fun. The 20th Zushan International Science Culture Festival has been opened at Zushan City in East China's Zhejiang Province. Over 50 science sculptures were shined with lights in a park featuring many themes in terms of ocean culture, Chinese and foreign customs, movies and historical stories. The show area with more than 20,000 cubic meters of sand is 200 meters long and 50 meters wide. French type rope walker Tatiana Mosio Bongonga walks on a cord which hangs 35 meters from the ground above Montmartre in Paris in rehearsal. Bongonga said she had been preparing for the show, which also features an orchestra, for a year. She started walking on tight rope when she was just eight years old. Bollywood actress Richard Chadha, who will be seen portraying South Indian adult film actress Shakila in an upcoming biopic on her, met Shakila in Bengaluru prior to the biopic shoot. The film, which will revolve around uh, Shakila's journey from entering the film industry at the age of 16 and her life after that, is scheduled to release in 2019.